So hello, folks. Um, I'm trying a new thing out. I had my surgery last week, so I decided to try and upload a video with a presentation for week seven in the video. So here we go. Um, and it is on, I'm sorry, week eight, transportation, safety, and security. So if I start to uh, forget that I'm on camera, please excuse me. I haven't done this before. This is the first time, so this is a test. Um, what I'd like you to do is email me back if you do get it or if you're able to view this after I upload it onto Moodle. Um, so that's your job. That's your homework for the week is to upload, I'm sorry, is to get in touch with me and let me know if you were able to um, view this simple recording. Um, <clears throat> I know that it's not the same as having me live in class, but you'll have to do um, with this uh, simple presentation. So the September 11th events illustrated the vulnerabilities of our system and required a change to past approaches. Um, and in the discussion board, I've asked how people were affected by the events of September 11th. And one of the answers in the discussion board, one of the uh, replies, responses was um, the TSA um, going flying out. It's kind of a pain in the neck if you're a frequent flyer or you fly, or you have family in other parts of the country or the world, and you fly often. Uh, you have to leave uh, two hours early. Oftentimes you're in... Um, taking off your shoes, you can't travel with a lot of materials. So there's definitely been, um, it's definitely affected travel after September 11th. Travel has definitely been affected. So the agencies involved include the Department of Transportation, um, the Transportation Security Agency, which is the TSA, which basically um, was formed after, well, it, it, was, it was there, um, but it was privately uh, used and developed. And so when you flew, most of the security was done by private companies. After September 11th, the, gov the government took it over and it became part of the um, uh, Department of Homeland Security. So a general term that refers to the, to the movement of things or people from one location to the other. That's what transportation is. Transportation systems intertwined into a global network. Millions of people and products moved worldwide daily. So we know that uh, every day we come to school, we travel on the subway, we travel on the bus. Um, people travel back and forth to different parts of the world. Some, sometimes people do it frequently. Sometimes congressmen, senators, they travel back and forth to Washington. They're on the, uh, the red line or whatever they call them. They, the early morning shuttle buses or planes, flights, or the red eye, whatever they call it, that shuffles them back and forth from New York to Washington or from uh, New York City to Albany. They take these, they, they, you know, travel frequently. There's also people that for business reasons travel um, widely, th uh, often throughout the world. So safety and security needs are equally complex and interconnected. Um, so the big one is, is the airline industry. And so we've spent an inordinate amount of time and energy securing the airline industry. And there's been a heavy reliance on the private sector. So um, although the TSA agents are federally employed, um, the, the airlines themselves, they're required to uh, take part in, in, in airline security also. So the transportation network is the freight rail, highways, roadways, and motor carrier networks, ports and intermodal freight transportation, mass transit, pipeline security, uh, which has been in the news the last couple of days because there's a pipeline going through a uh, part of the United States up in the northwest. Um, and there's been many protests about it. Um, they've actually turned violent. Air freight commercial and general aviation. So air freight is, we have seen when you go to the airports, uh, UPS and some of the major um, freightways, they have their own airlines that carry their um, equipment. So the TSA was formed um, aviation transportation after the uh, Aviation Transportation Security Act. The, T the TSA is within the DOT in 2003. 
and it was moved to the Department of Homeland Security, the OPP Department of Transportation. So the Department of Transportation had it at first. It, come, it came under their auspices, and then they decided, hey, it's better if we move this over to the Department of Homeland Security um, for obvious reasons. Aviation security, a direct federal responsibility for the first time. That was after September 11th. Prior to that, um, it wasn't the federal government's responsibility for um, airline security. So we did have in the past several instances where people were able to smuggle um, bombs and contraband onto flights. But um, it, it, considering all the amount and the amount of flights that fly out of all the airports in the world, um, there wasn't really that many instances in, this, in the United States. But when they finally um, did occur, they were, they were catastrophic. Consolidated all transportation security activities under the umbrella of one agency. So sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, aviation security receives the highest priority. Approximately 50,000 um, TSO, uh, which are TSA, they're the agents, the uh, offices, t transportation um, security offices, provide screening and other security services. So we all know when we go to the airport, if you fly out early and you get to that um, booth, you show them your ID and then you go past and take off your shoes, they're yelling and sometimes they're not happy, sometimes it's because of the amount of, uh, you know, people that come through, but it's a staggering scope of TSA for their uh, security mandate. So the TSA components are the transportation, I'm sorry, transportation security grants, law enforcement programs, security programs, and security screening. So um, they are given money grants to utilize new technology, and uh, the technology is it's dynamic. It's changing all the time, from pictures to um, eye, eye, eye retina ret, retina scanners to all kinds of uh, new security gadgets to try and make it more um, to try and make it safer and and more efficient. The law enforcement program, the TSA actually has people um, that fly on the plane that are armed. Armed security, um, they're armed officers, so they're, they're a, a division of their law enforcement. We don't know who they are. Sometimes they're on your flight, sometimes they're not. Security programs and security screening. Um, the security programs obviously um, in, involve all facets of airport security, uh, railroad security, um, but most of the airports, like we said, a lot of a lot of the uh, money and a lot of the energy is spent on securing our airports, and for good reason. We'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, security screening. So security um, screening is is prior to people coming onto the flights. So we have a no fly list and various um, folks that are not allowed to fly out on the plane. Um, Transportation Security Grants, the rail, Freight Rail Security Grant Program was in, in, in and the Intercity Bus Security Grant Program. These are programs, Transit Security Grant Program. These are, these are programs that are uh, meant to um, enhance local security programs. So the MTA bus service might, ha might put in for a grant to secure um, bus facilities by putting cameras up. So they might write for a grant and write to get money so that they can um, uh, provide security to their uh, buses when they're not being in use um, or, or the freight yards when they're not being in use. There's been a, bit, been a crackdown on, on our freight rail or subways where we store our subways. Years ago when uh, graffiti or street art or whatever you want to call it was prevalent, um, Folks used to climb into the rail yards in the various parts of the city and they would spray paint or they'd have a free time to uh, paint trains. Obviously, some of the uh, paintings on the, and the graffiti were quite, uh, uh, took quite a lot of time to do. So you know they weren't standing outside the train platform while the train was moving, painting them. So they had to be somewhere where they were um, dormant and not being used, but if people were able to um, paint them. So it was usually occurred in a train yard. So we cracked down and we, we started cleaning them and we started to um, 
surveil, put surveillance cam cameras in the train yards where the trains were, were moored when they weren't being used. TSA law enforcement is the Federal Air Marshal Service, which I've talked about a little bit before. Um, so air marshals are on the flights, they're armed. Um, there's a program where they've actually armed uh, pilots. The National Explosives Detection Canine Team, we've seen these, these uh, canines at airports, um, in the subways, and, and it's a pretty big uh, canine training has become a very, uh, it's become a pretty um, ex expensive and a uh, training uh, to, to train these animals, different dogs, different types of dogs to um, sniff different kinds of components. So it's become kind of a lucrative, uh, it, you know, enterprise for people that were in law enforcement or people that know how to train dogs. So they can train specific um, breeds or better at uh, locating or sniffing out different kinds of, of um, uh, scents. So maybe drugs, could be bombs, could be gunpowder. Um, and so it's become a very lucrative and, uh, a, again, it's a dynamic field of training these animals because some of them don't have a long lifetime um, or long life expectancy. They live longer um, than they're, they're useful as, um, you know, dogs or as, as uh, canine detection dogs. That's my phone. So I'm not going to answer it. It's going to just keep ringing. Um, the Armed Security Officer Program, the Federal Flight Deck Officer Program, and the Law Enforcement Officers Ar Flying Arm Program. Those are all uh, TSA law enforcement programs. And um, the Flying Arm Program is the one I was talking about where they actually arm uh, pilots and co-pilots. So if you're a co-pilot or a pilot and you're interested in becoming an uh, armed member of the flight crew, you can apply and they train you to carry a firearm. TSA security programs, air cargo security, obviously um, when we send um, our baggage or people send baggage or send packages through the mail, um, there's a security program that checks them to make sure that they're not carrying contraband or, or bombs or bomb making material. Flight school security awareness training program. Um, we talked about that. I've talked about that quite a bit, how the FBI um, didn't connect the dots after September 11th when somebody came in and said that they want to learn how to fly a plane, but they didn't really want to learn how to land it. So that's kind of a, that would throw up a red flag, you know. I just want to fly, but I don't want to land. Um, the uh, the one step program, it's uh, it's actually I don't believe it's in. So I'm not going to get into it because I don't believe that it's in existence any longer. Uh, passenger screening, baggage and baggage screening, um, covert testing. These are all part of this TSA uh, security screening process. Passenger screening, obviously, it's when you go through the um, Metal detectors, we take off our shoes, our belts, any metal objects um, every so often so that's not, they're not accused of uh, profiling. They randomly pick people and they pull you to the side. And so they, they give you um, oftentimes a, um, they give you a, a more thorough testing. Baggage screening occurs uh, when your baggage go through that detector and also when your bags are loaded onto the jet. Um, so there's some covert testing. Um, sometimes um, it's never happened. I've, I've known people that have gone um, to shooting ranges and whatnot. And so their fingers, um, sometimes if you don't, if you shoot um, thousands of rounds of a firearm and you go to uh, board a plane, sometimes the gunpowder residue um, is picked up. Um, during covert testing or during testing by a or if, uh, a, an animal, if, if you're in the airport, sometimes a an animal will alert to that kind of uh, scent. So there's covert testing that goes on uh, also in the airports. Trucking security. Um, most hazmats transported by truck on public um, highways and roads. Hazmats, of course, are, are hazardous materials. 
So most hazardous materials um, that are transported, chlorine, different various chemicals are transported by trucks and they have placards that on the back of the truck that designate and denotate what they're carrying. The shape of the truck also tells you if you've seen trucks that carry gasoline, they're a different shape um, than trucks that carry liquid oxygen. Um, so um, the trucking is, 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 is it, and there's so many trucks on the road. So it's been an issue. It's been a, uh, it's been a terror. Th it's been a threat um, that we haven't paid as much attention to, obviously, ha as air, air travel. Um, so that, that's a threat that terrorists will use. A tr there's been a threat that exists that terrorists will use a truck carrying some dangerous, dangerous chemical or other material um, and detonate. Now, it's already happened in the United States um, several times. Obviously, in the World Trade Center, the first bombing attack, a truck was used. Um, in the Oklahoma City attack, um, Timothy McVeigh rented a rider truck and parked a rider truck loaded with explosives in front of that building. So it's not something that hasn't happened. They're worried about the hazmat materials, obviously taking a truckload of, of uh, cyanide gas or something and driving it into a building or chlorine. Um, could have a devastating effect on, on a building or on a, on a community if it was used as a weapon. Releases involve, involving the volume or weights of materials contained in these vehicles can have catastrophic potentials. So this is true. They're worried about the amounts that are carried. Just think about it. A propane uh, truck that exploded carrying, you know, we have those, everyone has seen the small containers that we use on barbecues, and when they explode, it's devastating. Just imagine... Um, a truck carrying that material, how devastating that would be. Um, port shipping security, again, ports and shipping has been an under, um, an under studied and under, um, <clears throat> it hasn't been given the same uh, intensity as airline security, and yet shipping and ports are very, very vulnerable to um, bringing contraband into this country. So securing maritime and ported and exported goods is a critical task. Um, a successful terrorist attack on a major U.S. port could disrupt the U.S. economy. Um, so we all know we see these container ships that come in through our ports. We see them coming in through the um, Hudson River or, or the lower New York Bay, and they go to the various places along the um, waterway, Port Newark, and um, in Staten Island there's another port in Goth, right under the Gothels Bridge. So some of these container ports, if they were able to, and, and the fear was, again, it came from some of the uh, some some of the material that was gleaned in Afghanistan after the after we um, were able to take over some of the hard drives that the that the Taliban had, and they looked and they saw that they were interested in bringing a a nuclear device of some sort into a major port. Maybe they were just talking about it, but um, the intelligence community, the intelligence was there that that was one of the things that they were interested in doing. So the Safe Port Act of October 2006 um, was enacted to enhance port security for that reason. So not every container ship is checked, but most are x-rayed and most are um, at least at the very least x-ray and if the x-ray comes up that there's possibly something in it then that container is searched the u.s coast guard is the head is the lead federal agency in port security nine of 16 container security steps occur outside of u.s jurisdiction so nine of 16 container security steps um, and there's a lot of different steps involved in the manifest and what's put into the container. So a lot of them happen outside of the um, United States jurisdiction, which is scary. Um, and most of them occur on the, in the port where they're loaded. So if they're loaded in, in uh, somewhere in the Middle East and shipped over here, that's a concern. Those, those containers receive more scrutiny than a container that comes from Canada. Unfortunately, that's the way of the world and that's the way things go. Um, Bus transportation security. Um, so in the United States here, we haven't really suffered any terrorist attack on buses, but in Great Britain and in France, 
uh, buses and people riding on buses have been targeted by terrorists and, and uh, the bus, double-decker bus in, in Britain was blown up. So there are, has been attacks on buses. And just think about it. How scary is that to be on a bus traveling up Fifth Avenue and have the bus explode um, or have a subway car explode? These would be catastrophic to our psyche. People wouldn't want to ride on buses or security or, or, or uh, subway cars. Um, it's often neglected link in the nation's transporta transportation infrastructure represents a security vulnerability. Obviously, if you have a backpack and you load it with uh, some kind of uh, explosive device, um, is it is it you know um, odd to see somebody board a bus with a backpack? Absolutely not. We all carry backpacks. We all carry bags. So um, it represents quite a security vulnerability. And if somebody had um, wants to get on a bus that's filled with people and detonate a bomb, um, it's, it's, it's not, I don't want to say that it's easy. The hard part is making the bomb. The easiest part is getting onto the bus. Um, in the past in Britain, um, the attacks have been coordinated. So while one bus was being um, blown up, they were also able to detonate bombs on their, in their security and their train system. So um, that's what they're worried about, these attacks where not just one person goes on to a bus, but four different people go on in a coordinated attack and attack people on four different bus stops or four different um, railroad stations. That would wreak havoc on our, on our local transportation system, anyone, anyone in the United States, if that were to occur here. Um, buses have been used in terror attacks worldwide. Um, securing a bus system is an extremely challenging task because multiple stops, frequency changing passengers, and a short periods of time. So um, theoretically, if the person didn't want to be a suicide bomber, they could get on the bus on one stop, put the bag down under a seat, get off the next stop, and detonate it using, a say, a, uh, a cell phone before somebody was able to see something or say something, you know. Um, it might happen instantaneously. Maybe the person will see it right away, but uh, it's not it's not that uh, unheard of for somebody to board a bus on one stop and get off on the next. It doesn't really raise up um, that much concern. Railway trade, no, 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 sorry, railway transportation security is a highly utilized and valuable component of the U.S. transportation infrastructure. Um, a lot of people travel by train for a couple, for several reasons. One, um, it's cheaper sometimes, and two, a lot of people don't like to fly, so they travel by train. And um, you know, th th there's a an extensive railway system throughout the United States, and people, many many people, utilize it. Um, requires protective measures to address the growing threat of terrorist attacks and other hazard related vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, and and again, uh, there have been many many uh, occurrences where trains have, where there's been derailments of trains that have been carrying, uh, freight trains that are carrying chemicals. Um, and the freight are actually, um, these freight trains might carry seven cars of a noxious gas rather than just one content, one truck. So they're actually more chemical compound on a, tr on a maybe a freight train than there are on a, on a uh, tractor trailer. So um, the hazard potential is even greater if a train is attacked or a train disrails. Um, protection of the railway system is given special attention um, in a national strategy for the physical protection of critical infrastructure and key assets and in the announcement of Operation Liberty Shield. So there's been a movement to um, make train safety railway transportation to make it more secure for, for those reasons, for, for passenger and for freight. So um, that pretty much is the end of uh, chapter seven. And so um, I'm just going to say right now, as I close it up, that um, I'd like you to get back to me and tell me if you're able to see the video and um, you don't have to tell me what you think. Uh, I don't need rating. I don't, I don't really need a review. I just want to know if you were able to watch it or not. And so I will see you this Thursday in class.
and we'll be watching a video in class, so uh, I'll see you then. Take care.